I got the boring, boring bar set up and I got the bore ready to go. I went and I got my snap gauges. And I've been snapping this hole in all different directions here. And I'm getting anywhere from 1 inch 250, 2 and a half. One inch, two fifty, two and a quarter. Pretty close to the same. All right, one inch two fifty two and a half to two, one inch two fifty two and a quarter, or two and two and a half tenths in that ballpark area. I'm um, I'm just eyeballing the amount of tenths. So <clears throat> and we. We use a drill of one and an eighth here, uh, one inch, one two five, and uh, we're about one inch, one twenty nine. So the drill drilled about four thousandths over its nominal. All right, so we got enough room to go ahead and take a, a starter cut in here, and that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna drop my feed down a little bit, and I think I want to increase my feed. Or, excuse me, increase my speed, reduce my feed. I was talking earlier before dinner when I was actually out here starting this job and and I wanted to put a dashboard gauge up here so <clears throat> I, I like I, I use my dials and I and I am very confident in in seeing that but I want to make sure by having this up here any of the play in this con this carriage in this compound which I have a lot of play in this thing we're gonna be one of these days I'm gonna tear this apart and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a new lead screw and a new nut and and um, I create that project but right now we're covering gear so let's get on with the gear and this is I'm just using this so I can keep an eye on it and we'll go ahead and we'll set a zero here as well around I'll use the vacuum cleaner to clear out my bores uh, and, and work until I get done turning cast now I can switch back to blowing mode but
Okay, so we uh, open it up. So now we're about 81. <clears throat> one inch, 181 thousandths. Okay, I'm going to reset my dial here at zero and at zero here. And uh, I'm going to take a measurement, but I think we're going to call it a night out here. And... I got uh, editing work to do inside on another video, so... I, uh... I want to try to even out what I got going on here. Yeah, so you got like uh, 210 here. One inch, 210. So we got, we got another 20,000 per side plus a couple thousands to match up with our original bore on the original gear so that we'll be able to run both of them on the same mandrel. So that's kind of what I want to shoot for is to actually have both of them the same, same diameter so we can slide one off, we can create uh, or slide one on, create the teeth, slide it off, and then after we get in and braise up these missing teeth, which is going to be uh, basically the show and tell of how I would go ahead and repair teeth if needed to be that. All right. Okay, we come back out here this morning and we're just double checking here. We're going to sneak up on this bore and we're going to finish the bore out. And then we're going to take one more skim cut across here. The bore and this face here, we're going to call this back side here. Why this little groove is in here, I'm not sure. I think it's just relief for the mechanism that works on here. There's also a relief slot there. I don't think anything really sits in there, but this curved ear and this curved ear come together, and I think it's just to keep a high spot off. This is the pull pin or locator pin over here. Um, but... I can see this wear, so this gear shoulders out against this side right here. And that means this side and the bore should be absolutely dead nuts. And then this side here is open, it really doesn't, it doesn't really uh, locate against anything. So we're going to do this side here, then we're going to flip it over and then we'll go ahead and do this relief in here. Um, and then we'll be ready to go ahead and set it up on a mandrel and then we'll, we'll just true up the OD uh, to the final size. We left it just a little bit fat here so that we can make sure that we are turning it a hundred percent with the inside diameter. All right, now I uh, put the gear down so I can get back to measuring this and Alright, yeah, we're like 236 right here. Okay. And, uh, we're retouching off just to make sure nothing overnight is interfered with the handles. Okay, we're almost like just 10 under or so. We're, we're like 41 and I think we needed to go like 52 and 2 tenths or something like that. Yeah, 1 inch 252 and a couple tenths. And it's hard to believe that it's, to me it's almost like this is 2000s oversized, but it's the sample. Uh, it does look like it was mating, mating uh, you know, pretty firm all the way around. So uh, it does show the signs of press fit there. So, all right, we might go for just slightly under, just so that we can we can uh, polish the last 
half a thousand or something out of this thing if we need to at the end or Tyrell can do that as well okay there's 40 I'm one inch 251 and a half so I'm within three quarters of a thousandth of being right size I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna polish that just a little bit with some paper One inch, two hundred and two. I'm going to leave it exactly right there. All right, I'm going to take, I'm going to double check this depth here, make sure that we we still have some on this face right here. I mean, I did face it before we went from there, but uh, if we have a little bit more to take off on that depth, I'm going to take a, a thou or so just, uh, just so I can know that I'm 100% positive, or I can put an indicator across here, and if I'm reading them 100% perfect right now um, I could actually just leave that just like that It's reading right on there. So I could leave it, I could take a cut. This is pretty sharp. This is a crisp corner. Normally I'd break this a little bit, but now I think I'm it. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to hold a little bit of paper right on the edge. I'm kind of moving my instrument so they don't vibrate or fall off here. Cast is a very, uh, you can massage cast and get some nice finishes off of it as well. They're always kind of satin and you know you're not going to get a gloss. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not going to say you're never going to get a gloss off a cast, but most of the time it has a grain to it. So, Alright, this gear here is 687 or so thousand. So that's a 11 sixteenths on the width is the fractional dimension for that width and we're going to go ahead and pop this free here and then we're going to clean up behind it and we're going to flip flip it around and the width we have here right now is 702 so we got you know basically we got about 15 thousandths to come off of this give or take a thou all right, we're going to get the vacuum. We're going to clean up this uh, bore here to where we can put this up and know that we're not going to have anything interfering in behind here. Um, and then we're going to we're going to go look in the drawers and we're going to hunt up for some radius tools and we're going to get our radius gauge just to uh, double check and see what this is. This is really rough in here and it was just basically relief here. So um, we're just going to we're going to duplicate that as best as we can. All right. We've got this cleaned up, ready to put it back in here, and I've gone around with my 
my dial calipers and of course I got reading with my dial and, and uh, the way that dials work and everything else I get like a oh a half a thousandth but in trueness I grab my micrometer and I go and I get anywhere from um, 703 to 702 so I get about a thousandth difference of parallelism in this part and that's why I wanted to have and plan out which face has to be 100% true with that bore. Um, that we know that, that this is not going to, 1,000 is nothing for run out on this side. And the chances are when I come in here and I take the last skim cut on here, making sure that there's nothing on this side here, it may improve. I mean, it also has a chance of, you know, going from there but when I put this back in here actually it, we can do this right now and uh, and this is just I'm gonna find the high and the low on this and then I'm gonna mark it okay that looks like the three there okay right about here is the high or the three This is the side that's going to go against the back. So, right there. If we put this in and this is running parallel and this face is running parallel, then we should be showing the one thousandth difference right there. Now I could tap that in and everything else, but I'm just going to go for the feel now. I'm going to go ahead and get the indicator and we'll set that up on there. Alright, I brought you in a little closer uh, to this and I got my mag base, my indicator on here. And I'm just going to go ahead and give it a little bit here. So, um, right there's our X. Alright. Are we on zero? Alright. I think this way moves smoother. Okay, now we went down and we're back up. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to assume that the back side of my part is running pretty close to dead nuts, and this outside is giving us the difference that we saw in in thickness with our micrometers. All right. Now I'm going to get a test indicator and I'm just going to see what our bore is. It's not really relevant, but I would like it to run as close as possible because even though this is relief and it's, you know, if we're within a couple thousand, it shouldn't matter um, for the bulk and size and the speed of this thing is not really super high speed uh, on this older lathe with spur gears. Um, so let me get that set up. Okay, I got uh, this set up in here on, on the inside of the bore here, and this is just an intrepid uh, dial indicator, so we're seeing that that's the low right there, and this is the high. Alright, so we bring it down to the low, and we have that low, we spun it around to where we're in line with this one jaw here. Alright, and that, that's reading about 20 thousandths there, so what you do is you take one of your least favorite customers business cards and you cut a piece off of it because it's pretty close to half of what you see there and you loosen this up here and you stick this in there like that and you're just trying to minimize that okay and we got that down to about four thousands right now all right, so we're pretty close right in there, and we're still just a little bit low right there. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> we can check out another piece of paper here. And we're going to add that in there.
we're still making sure that we're pressing on the back there and we will double check that with our indicator after we're done just so that we make sure that we're happy with our reading here. And I think I rotated this just a little bit when I did it. Um, okay, so. All right, there we go. That's what it was. I was going like this and I rotated. We're within two thousandths now. Okay, now I, that's going to be close enough for me to go ahead and put a relief in here, which is not, it's not even a fine tune piece of uh, machine cut itself so um, and I'm gonna be happy that I'm close enough at that point there now we'll go ahead and put our indicator here just make sure that we still have our plus one at the mark there and we're ready to start cutting okay what I did is I went and I got my radius gauge now I had this back in the shipyards uh, all the way and I probably got this somewhere around 1983 or so um, just recently I acquired a, uh, a handle for it and there's a missing spot up here and it may have actually had a 164th in it or that's the spot to put your one that you're currently working on now I went ahead and I think this is close to I, I, I had some tool bits in here and this is a little that's like 400 something and this is a 516 or 3 8 tool bit and the radius is pretty close in there so I think this is really a 3 16 radius or that was what it was intended and the radius gauge is real close to it radius gauges are real handy to have for one checking what you have and also um, kind of checking what somebody else had used on a project and you know keeping a uniformity uh, um, they're also handy to have at the grinder so that when you're hand grinding a tool bit you have several different ways of checking your work as far as shaping out your tool bit oh, there's, uh, I do <clears throat> I drag them out quite a bit and they're a very important tool to actually have in your box and I like it alright so I've got I've got like three choices of tool bits here to kind of play around with this is a little short and a little stubby and I'm working in a big lathe that I don't really feel like uh, hassle on with trying to hold that in with one set screw or whatever this one right here would be kind of easy and I, I kind of like the grind on it but I'm gonna be coming in here and I'm gonna be hitting this one and that one there and this is a nice full circle now this is about 430 or so just a little bit under 716 so I'm gonna go dress it up and I'll probably be uh, getting it down closer to probably about a 400 or so and I think that's going to be close enough for this radius in here. Okay, I did dress it all the way around. So I used both sides of my cup wheel. And she's pretty, pretty close along the side. When you come in, you start going here, you see a little bit of hollow in there because it's a little fatter. But I did sharpen up this radius and, and that radius over here is still just slightly fat, just like the front. But this leading edge over here is pretty close. We're actually going to be over here on this side here. But we'll come into here. And then face across to there. But we'll do it in slow-mo. You know, we'll get the depth. We'll probably whittle back and forth. We're not just going to plunge it in and go across. All right. So let's go get it laid out so we have a line where we know where this is at and where this is at so that we have an eyeball line in here and then we're going to set, we're going to come in, we're going to touch this surface here, set zero and then we'll know what depth this is. We're also going to grab a depth mic to find out what that depth is. Okay, we went ahead and went over into the cupboard there and we grabbed, we grabbed our depth mic here and, and of course, when you, Depth mic is backwards from a micrometer, okay? Because you start here at zero and then you screw it this way here. Um, and and you read it from right to left and on a micrometer, you read it from left to right. So as this comes in, as, the, as it goes up, we're actually screwing it left hand. And as you're, as you're going up here, you're actually right hand, just to think in, in depth micing. 
uh, and versus regular OD mic. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to be screwing this down, and we're holding, we're holding, we're holding flat against here and here. Actually, that's been a repair over there. Let's go over here to a virgin side right here. All right, rather measure a virgin here. All right, um, all right. So we got 200, and we're at the third, <clears throat> just about to the third line. So the we're under 75. So 265 is what we got right there, give or take a couple tenths. Okay, so we're slightly deeper than quarter inch. Okay, so um, you know it looks it looks doesn't look that deep and you know you, you want to just make sure nothing's playing tricks on your eyes or anything else you're reading it right go ahead and take your scale double check it and look there you're at, you know just a little bit over two hundred fifty thousandths reading your hundreds okay alright let's get in the late now okay this bore and that bore are the same size even though that one looks smaller but that's just because this one this one here is uh, not pronounced, or this one is not pronounced with this cut out there. So we're at an uh, inch and a quarter. Remember, uh, two thousandths over. All right, so we got basically about three eighths of an inch out from here, and one and a half inches out from the center bore is going to be uh, where we need to create a dicum or a bluing. Okay, so don't forget to save all of your dull sharpies. Because uh, they really pay off on this and this gear here. Now let me know if you said uh, basically about three eighths of an inch and we can eyeball that we know that we're in there and then about an inch and a half Okay, now we got some bluing there. This one looks a little faint. It's okay. Grab another stick. See if we can darken it up a little. Okay, two coats of sharpie on that outside one. All right, let's go ahead. We're just going to take our scribers here, our dial scribers. Um, 340. 340. Uh, let's put this down in uh, low speed here. Okay. Right. Now, I want to get this one out here, but it's going to be kind of difficult to do that. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna give it a shot. So it's about inch five twenty now. All right. Remember to use your old dial scribers. All right. Now all we gotta do is come in here, touch, and here. So I'm gonna go ahead and find. I'm gonna set up and mount this in here. I want this is a half inch tool bit. Most of my tooling is one inch, and I find that just getting another half an inch, this is half inch here, so you get another half inch tool bit and put underneath there and most of the time the center height is really really close on that kind of a setup so that's kind of what I'm going to do. Alright, we emptied out one of our CA2 holders here and and uh, oh I think I want to angle it something like that just so I know it's out and uh, it, it's got a free mode here so we're going to Tighten down on that. Oh, we get, this is, we're gonna leave it loose because we got we gotta turn this around, but we want enough tension here to. All right. Now we know this is still above here, so we can uh, we look up here six uh, six two eighty is our dimension that we're looking for for center, and we need to let her down some more. Six three hundred. Tighten it a little bit. Uh, okay, I think that's pretty close. All right, now 
We know it. <clears throat> we know it's not tight, but we also know that we don't have it out here in front of us. Peel this back. I'm gonna get up here a little closer. We can keep our mess right here in front of us. I kind of like that. Okay, from there we're only going in 250 thousandths and I get a whole hand uh, dimension in here for the swing. Alright, so we're just making sure we're safe. Alright, this is going to bug me a little bit here, so let's let's go ahead and I like this little razor blade idea here. set let's go ahead and, and let's touch off so we got we can set a dial for zero we are kind of rubbing there already it looks like about the uh, we're hitting that one spot over here is that where yeah our X was okay all right so there's zero we know we're gonna go in X amount uh, like uh, so let's uh, we're gonna feed it in 50 thousandths here, or until we get a chatter, chattered at 25 thousandths at a plunge. Okay, now let, we can feed it in. There's uh, there's 50,000. There's another 25,000. I actually kind of rolled out as I was pushing in, just so the tool pressure is kind of light. Now I'm going to come out closer to my line this time, and of course I'm still cranking. This is all by hand. Okay, we're kind of close there now. We're going to push it in some more. There's another 25. That's a hundred on the depth so far total. Now we're 25. Each pass I'm just going to go ahead and take the 25. thousands right now. 175. I'm letting it chatter, but I'm getting it down in there. I know I can take that chatter out. Okay, there's 200,000 on the depth. That's pretty nice on the way out. Okay, I'm gonna come in 
Yeah, I'm just dressing up close to the line here now. Coming in, watching my depth there. There's a 225. Yeah, we're just start skimming it. Okay. All right, we're gonna take a breather. Double check our, our depth there, uh, just so it's clear in our head. Check out our widths right here, real close with the uh, scales, and then we'll go in for a final cut. All right, we took our depth mic here, and we're at. Like two inches thirty thousandths. And this width here, we are like three eighty or so and like three forty is that line right there. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add in rest of our depth there and we're going to start we're going to rub in here a little bit to make sure that we're getting closer in at the beginning here okay I can see that line disappear now there and that line still looks good so we're gonna take it right to the line I like that there's a 55 I'm going to go ahead and take it into the 65 here. It should be right there. Alright. It's a little shy of that line. That line's right, but uh, let's see here. Yep. I like that. All right. 
right, and our depth, we should be somewhere around 2 inches 65, and we are about 2, 2 and a half tenths under that, but I'll let that go. Okay, we pulled the blank out of the lathe now, and we have this dished out relief here. We're comfortable. We're still a little bit big on the OD, but we want to finish turning that on a mandrel once we make the mandrel. Before we make the mandrel, I would like to go ahead and broach the, the key, the keyway in the middle, um, or in the bore. And I went over and I looked in my cabinet and I do have an eight, one eighth inch broach. So I can push broach this keyway in this bore. Now, while I was in there, I looked around and I happened to find a push guide that I made for a job that I did two keyways in one bore exactly from each other and they were 3 16 in diameter so I can pop this key out which I tap that in there tightly so it would ride in the second keyway and I would be able to broach the or I mean ride in the first keyway and I'd be able to broach the second keyway um, and we're gonna go ahead and make a step key for this so that we'll have 1 8 out here and 3 16 into the slot so that we could actually use this slug to go ahead and stack both of these up and actually we'll we'll probably do them this way here over in the mill to do the whole pattern because we'll be able to stack them pull the top plate off after we relocate which hole we want and then we'll be able to come down and duplicate that hole the lightning or balancing holes for the whole assembly and the three operating holes for the engagement for back gear and then after that then we're able to go ahead and have a keyed uh, shaft go through and we'll be able to not that I think it's any importance but we'll be able to align the actual um, engagement or timing of the teeth just because we can and then after that, we will go ahead and finish turning the OD and then set up, start setting up to actually cut the teeth in the gear. While we're right here in, in this position here, this brooch guide has got a slot that lets your brooch pass through. And it has just a little bit of side clearance, but not too much so that we're following the same path uh, and straight in line with the board. That's why you, you set it up and that this is the guiding slot and the slot's depth is set so that the beginning or the first section of the brooch will get into or inside the bore. And then as you push the brooch here, let me angle this a little bit here so you can see. All right, I'm, I'm going to presume that you can see that. Right. <clears throat> see if I can get this. <laughs> take uh, 300 here alright brooch guide laying on its side and I'm going to show you the brooch passing through the guided slot and the very beginning of the brooch is right here where my finger is and it's not sticking out past the the slot or the guide slot of the brooch and as the brooch gets pushed through here each tooth is a little taller than the tooth in front of it and it takes another little tiny bite out of the bore as it's being pushed through until the very last tooth at the bottom of this straight section right here is grabbing the final depth for that one push through. After the brooch has been pushed through, you have various you have various brooch shims. This happens to be the thinnest out of the, the section there. And you lay the, the shim right down inside the guide. And you push your brooch through for a second pass. Now it's, because of the shim, it's sticking out a little bit more. And then it'll pick up the bore. And then once it picks up the bore, each tooth after the first one it picks up, um, because every shim is a little different. Some of them will pick up pretty close to the front. Sometimes you'll pick up in there, but it's, it's shimming out your cutter. And then your second pass with the shim in there will take a little bit more. You stack up the shims in there and you progress this out pass by pass until you actually get the depth of the key that you want.
All right. Sometimes on small broach jobs, I like to grab my machinist vise here and I clamp the broach guide in here with the height here that pretty well sticks just slightly above the part because the shims will be able to rest in here and the broach and when you're pushing a broach through this area right here is your drop out so after it cuts its last tooth and the last tooth exits the part the broach kind of like freely drops out the bottom and then you can pick it up put your shim in and, and uh, start your next um, cut now about the third third or fourth tooth here you're actually starting to make engagement with the inside bore with how I've set up that that guide originally so I believe this whole thing is going to be small enough and I can and I, on the small brooches I like to use my little arbor press so we're going to go into the arbor press now and we're going to go ahead and broach this I took my little scale here and I measured the depth here basically half of the width plus just a skosh for clearance over the top of the keyway this will be about 60,000, 65, 65 to 70 thousandths on the depth will be the depth of our, our key that we're going to cut in this bore. We've got this set up in the arbor press and we're going to set the shims off to the side over here. Okay, see what I mean? And once that last tooth goes through, now you can still see, you can still see right there, and there, and there, a couple chips that are stuck on the edge of the teeth there. So what I do is I rub backwards and I, I clear, make sure that there's no teeth or chips in the teeth for the next pass. Come on, we got a funky light here. All right, that looks like about a 30 second, and I have three thicknesses here of shims, and I'm gonna put the thinnest one in here first. And I had to pitch it up a little bit to get this started in here because our stroke is real minimum on the amount of getting in there. All right, here we go. Okay, getting down the last tooth there, so I want to make sure that my hand's underneath here to catch the broach so it doesn't go on the floor. There we go. Now I do have to turn it sideways just to measure my depth and get a good look at it here. I'm slightly under, it's only, it actually looks like maybe 50 thousandths or so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the thin shim out here and I'm gonna take the medium shim and put that in here. And what that does is <clears throat> it lets the broach go down in and we're not fully taking a whole nother bite but we're going to take just a percentage more than the thin one took. It's our next size option anyway. And this one here should give us enough depth to be our full keyway there. And that looks like about 65 or 70 thousandths on the depth there.